All right, welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah, Family Tech, and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel because I really want to help parents understand and manage the technology in their home. So subscribe and I will publish videos every Thursday to help you get a handle on the technology. Uh, I always say you don't have to be a tech expert, you just have to be one step ahead of your kids. I'm really excited about today's topic because this is one that parents really get tripped up about because they you know, think, oh no, not my kid. My kid would never try and get around my parental controls. But the fact is most of them probably will at some point. So there are a lot of different ways kids can get around parental controls that you set. So I wanna break down some of those ways. Hello friends, I'm Sarah Kimmel, your friendly neighborhood tech expert. I've been an IT manager for over 19 years, supporting hundreds of small to medium-sized businesses. I'm also a mom to a tween and teen with over 50 connected devices in my home. I break down the tech talk to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. You can find me helping families with tech problems on TV news, podcasts, Instagram, Facebook, and my website, familytechzone.com. If you're a kid watching this, just go ahead and turn off the video right now. Uh, I have no information for you. Um, so let's just dig right into it. The first kind of basic, basic way kids get around parental controls is changing the time on their device. If you set a time limit or something like that, then if they go into the settings of the device and change their time, uh, they can circumvent anything that you've shut down after a specific time frame. This doesn't really help for uh, time limits because that's kind of calculated differently, but it will help them get around anything that you shut down at a specific time. So now this is gonna be really device specific, so the best way to kind of circumvent their circumvention of your parental controls is to first make sure they don't have access to the settings of their device. And you can do that through screen time or, um, or through Google Family Link uh, or other third party applications that help you block certain apps. But you can also help prevent this by setting time limits on the Wi-Fi itself. So anything the device thinks it's the wrong time, but the Wi-Fi is going to always know what time it is. Set those controls at the Wi-Fi level. This is why we talk about layers for sure, because um, if they're changing the time on the device, then that will only affect the device. If you have other layers of parental controls, it's still not going to circumvent those. So that's number one. They change the time on their device. The second one is the one I've already addressed. I feel like I talk about a VPN almost every video. <laughs> But it is a really important thing to understand. So the kid can install a VPN and get around your parental controls. There are a couple of different kinds of VPNs. So make sure that you are understanding exactly which VPN they might be using and try and shut it down. So you know they can have a VPN application on their phone or device. They can use a VPN extension for a Chrome browser because you know Chrome has all these different extensions if they install a VPN extension then that can also circumvent it so definitely watch for any of those VPN applications anywhere that could be installed the next way kids get around parental controls is using the share to function so if they take a picture with their phone and they click share and say they share it to a text message it will open up the text messages in a different kind of pseudo application and that application is not actually blocked so it opens up the text message they delete the photo and then they proceed to do the text they can do this for several apps so if they click share to it's basically opening that app inside the photos app and not counting the time towards that application so um, make sure you're just watching for that. If they're spending a lot of time in an app that seems kind of strange, like notes or um, or the photo gallery or things like that, then they're probably using that application to circumvent the restrictions that you've put on any of those other apps. Again, you can make sure that you know exactly what apps they're spending the most time on through uh, screen time for iOS or a Google Family Link. 
The next one that they use is kind of similar to the sharing function, and that's just saving links inside um, a notes application. So if they save a YouTube link, it can open that YouTube in that pseudo notes application. So again, you're just going to want to watch for anything that is happening in an app that just seems kind of strange. Like why are you spending so much time on notes or why are you spending so much time on Google Docs? Because if they're in a Google Doc, they can click the link and it opens up in this pseudo application and they get around the parental controls that way. The really low tech way to get around parental controls is just figuring out your password. I got a super funny message when I I was out of town with my friends that my son had figured out the pin code. He's the one that told me. He goes, Mom, I'm sorry, I figured out your pin code on the first try. And I thought I was pretty sneaky with my pin code, but um, he knows enough of like my kind of passwords and numbers that I like, so he was able to figure that out. And luckily, he came and told me exactly what had happened. The really funny part was that he kept requesting time after he told me he had figured out the pin. So even though he could totally override it, he kept requesting time while I was out of town. I kept approving it, but um, it was really funny that he would still request it even though I knew that he knew the pin code. Uh, I, I just really like that he was still requesting it. That made me really happy. They can figure out your password through a couple different ways. A, just knowing enough about you that they could try different numbers that might be important to you. Uh, the other way is sometimes they'll set up a screen recorder and then hand the phone to you and then you type in the, the pin code and then they've got a recording of it. You know, or they can just go super low tech and watch over your shoulder. I always make my kids turn around or, um, you know, go out of the room whenever I type in my password for anything that I'm proving for their devices. Those are the kind of three ways they can figure out your password just by, you know, knowing enough about you, by um, screen recording what you're doing, and by just looking over your shoulder. So definitely watch out for those so that because if they know your password, they can override any parental controls that you have put in place. Another way kids get around parental controls is by changing DNS on their device. A lot of times content filters will work through DNS misdirection. And what DNS is, it's called the Domain Name Service, and it's basically Google Maps. It will take an address, so google.com, and it translates it into an IP address. And that IP address is the location of the server that houses that website. So through DNS, it'll give the device directions to that server so it can display the website. So a lot of content filters will use this and give the device bad directions. So it'll say, oh no, google.com is over here and not over there. And that's when it's going to give them the filtered, you know, blocked page. But if they are able to change their DNS and circumvent that misdirection, then they'll be able to hit those websites. So you want to check and make sure they don't have access to their network settings, or if they do have access to their network settings, go ahead and check the DNS servers and make sure it's either on DHCP, which is what automatically, which is what automatically gives it its DNS settings, or if it's on manual, it's something that you have entered manually and you know the IP addresses that are in there. The next way kids get around parental controls is by using airplane mode. This is kind of counterintuitive because you think, oh, if they're going into airplane mode, they don't have internet. But if they have applications open, sometimes if they go into airplane mode, it forgets that that application is already open. They put it back. Like, you know, so they go into airplane mode, open up the application, turn off airplane mode and they're able to browse the application for a little bit. It doesn't always work, but um, it is definitely something to watch out for. And especially for items that don't need internet access, airplane mode is gonna be a way to circumvent 
any time restrictions that you've got in place as well. Another really low tech way that kids get around parental controls is by just stealing the device. So if you take the device at night, you say, oh, all the devices charge in my room at night, or all the devices charge in the kitchen. After you go to sleep, they'll sneak downstairs, they'll sneak into your room and take the device back. So definitely watch out for that. Um, you know, again, with layers, you might be able to stop that from happening because the Wi-Fi will already be off. So even if they take their device back, they won't have internet access in order to circumvent that. So make sure that you have different layers in place so that if they take their device back, then it's still going to lock them out and they won't be able to do anything with it. One of my daughter's favorite ways to get around parental controls is going down the YouTube rabbit hole. So she'll open up a YouTube video while she still has time and then keep that YouTube running constantly either by you know just clicking the next video or just letting it continue to auto play and so if they've created a playlist before they get shut down it can just play those videos one after another and sometimes that will help circumvent any app restrictions so if I've set YouTube for a one hour time limit on her device then she opens it up and just keeps letting it play sometimes because of YouTube and how it works and how you know it can pop up in those little thumbnails it can keep playing beyond that time frame so you want to make sure that you've shut it down at other places or you go in and make sure she closes the application at the time limit or close closes it at bedtime um, and watch her close that application out because uh, once they have it running then a lot of times they can keep it running so watch out for that one and then another thing if you've blocked the YouTube application they can try and open YouTube in a browser so uh, again this is just kind of a different way to access the content so it goes for TikTok and you know Facebook and Instagram they can use a browser to get around those restrictions. So if you have Instagram locked to one hour, then as soon as that hour is up, they open up Chrome, open up Instagram, and then they're back browsing Instagram. So make sure that you lock out the browsers as well for those timeframes because Otherwise, they'll just be able to browse those social media platforms or video platforms within the web browser. Another really fun, tricky way kids get around parental controls is by using voice assistants. So they will say the catchphrase, you know, Siri or Google, and then tell it to text something. So if they're on their phone and they tell the Google Assistant to text something, it's not going to register that they are using the text messaging app and then again sometimes it can open it in that pseudo frame and they can continue with their text messages so using their assistant and they can even you know, they can even just continue to use the assistant instead you know they get a message they see the notification and then they have the google assistant text the message back so they can continue to use that google assistant or siri to continue to send messages or do anything like that uh, because they are using the assistant and not necessarily the text messaging app a favorite way that kids get around some parental controls and a lot of these are having to do with kind of app controls themselves but you know obviously we've covered other different ways that they can get around uh, different kinds of layers of parental controls this one is again specific to app control so if they reach the limit on Instagram they delete the Instagram app download it again from the App Store and their time starts over so definitely watch out for that because if they're using it beyond the time frame that you've set they could be deleting it and reinstalling it and resetting their time frame over and over again uh, in conjunction with that apple devices will give them a one minute like warning to say hey you've reached the end of your time do you want one more minute and a lot of times they can keep hitting that one minute sure it's a pain but I've seen kids do that for hours just keep hitting that one minute yep okay 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 and continue to use the application beyond the time frame because Apple gives them that choice of continuing for one more minute 
So speaking of notifications from earlier, a lot of times you can actually respond within the notification, especially on Android devices. You swipe down and you reply right from the notification itself. So that's a really easy way for kids to get around parental controls by just using the notifications and responding within those notifications instead of trying to open up the app that is already blocked. They'll respond within the notification and they've gotten around it. This one is what I'm gonna call glitching the system. So um, a lot of times kids will figure out, you know, if they try and swap applications really fast, it will you know, kind of mess up the parental controls that you've got installed and it'll open up different applications. So, you know, they open it, it's blocked, clo like close it, open another app, open another app, open another app, switch, 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 open the app again, switch. It's just basically, you know, freaking out the parental control application until it finally allows them because it's so confused with everything that's going on. So I call this app switching or glitching the system, but there's a lot of different ways out there where they can, you know, do some things that kind of creates a bug in the system and allows them access to the application that they weren't supposed to access. Now this one is similar to the DNS changing, but this is changing their Mac ID. And this one is super, super tricky. So any Wi-Fi um, controls that you have, so I talked about last time the Griffin router or the Circle device or a Netgear router, all of those control devices by Mac ID. And it's basically a unique identifier for each device's network adapter. So a Mac ID will identify everything on your network. And you're probably familiar with it if you are using Wi-Fi blocking because you've had to identify all of the devices through their Mac ID. Well, what some really smart kids will do is look at Mac IDs of smart home devices in your network. So say the Nest device or you know a smart doorbell or anything like that, and then they will copy that Mac ID and change their own Mac ID to match that device. Now when it does that, it basically tells your Wi-Fi router that it is the Nest device and gives it free reign because the Nest device doesn't have content filters, doesn't have time limits and things like that. So once the device thinks, or once the Wi-Fi router thinks that it is this smart home device, then it will allow it access to all these different things. And it's harder to tell with a smart home device because you don't know that it's kind of glitching out. Because when they do copy that Mac ID, it's gonna cause conflicts on the network and it's going to start um, you know, the Nest or whatever smart home device it is, or if they're, copying your Mac ID from like your computer, you will start to have networking problems. So if you're suddenly not able to reach your Nest thermostat, it doesn't have a network connection or any other smart home devices aren't seeming to work correctly, I would check and see if the Mac ID on your child's device is matching anything that it shouldn't be or just at least that it it should match what Mac ID it already has. Um, another good way to tell is on your Wi-Fi, if you're using something like the Griffin router, then it will display how long it's been connected or not connected. And if it's using the wrong Mac ID, it's gonna show the regular device as not connected. So if you know they're on their device and your Wi-Fi router says it is not connected, then that's another good indication that maybe it's spoofing the Mac or IP address of another device on your network. So that one's a very sneaky one that's hard to circumvent, but as long as you're aware of kind of the telltale signs, then you can be a little more aware of w whether or not it's going on on your network. Another way kids get around parental controls is by using safe mode. So if they, you know, root their device or boot their device into safe mode, a lot of times it will disable those parental controls so they can use the you know texting application or anything like that. So safe mode is going to kind of open up a lot more that they might not have access to in regular mode. So one really cool product that I've talked about in my parental control breakdown is Boot 
boomerang parental controls if your child is using a Samsung device it actually prevents them from opening in safe mode so that is a really awesome feature that boomerang parental controls has that can help you circumvent their circumvention of your parental controls and finally is what I call the kill switch they completely reformat their phone and when they do that they just log in and have free access to everything because your parental control applications are not installed anymore and if they log in with any other different kinds of um, IDs that you're not aware of so if they log in with an Apple ID that you didn't know they had then it wouldn't be connected to your family sharing and you would never know so again I would be aware of if things are offline in your parental control applications, if it's not checking in, if it's not displaying reporting on what is going on on the device, then that again is a warning sign that maybe they have reformatted their phone. Um, and you know, kids today aren't as attached to the things going on on their phone. They know it's backed up to the cloud, so they don't mind a reformat now and then if they really need to get around those parental controls. So uh, those are kind of the break. I know I threw a lot at you definitely don't forget to subscribe I really want you to join my tech fam so that you can understand that technology in your home also for sure follow me on Instagram I answer questions in my DMS I try to answer the questions here as well so if you have questions definitely drop me a note and I will try and help you out with your specific tech questions so we'll see you next Thursday